Hello, and thank you for watching the second part in my entry into the Great Guitar Build-Off 2021. Uh, what you can see in this video is I start over, yes, again, uh, and instead of staining it, I decided to go with a spray paint uh, because I was a little more confident that I could get the color that I wanted to get with that. Um, so what I did was a three-tone, uh, started with a Lagoon uh, Blue, uh, in the center and then a hunter green around that and then finally black around the edges and you'll see that later in the video. One thing I didn't get on footage though was I purchased this piece of uh, pick guard material, it's white pearlescent, uh, and cut out a new pick guard uh, because I think it looks a lot nicer than the black plastic one that shipped with the kit. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, I thought this would look nice with the colors I went for. So all I did to do that was I cut it out with a jigsaw and then drilled the holes. I uh, filed the bevel into it using this file right here. And uh, then after that was all done, I uh, sanded everything so it was uh, nice and smooth and not rough plastic anymore. So. Uh, that'll show up a little later in the video, but uh, once again, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of this video. So we get started right away with drawing out a mask for the body and insetting that about an inch, inch and a half, something like that. Uh, and that'll be used, uh, raised off of the body in order to uh, get some overspray. Uh, but not cover the whole body with that second color. So that would be, this would be the mask for the green. So you see, all you really need is some cardboard, a couple screws, and some duct tape, just like most things in life. So here what I was trying to do is make sure that the screws line up with the cavity holes, the pickup pick cavities, uh, the bridge holes, uh, and what I noticed was the screws weren't quite long enough, so a uh, quick fix for that in a moment. Yeah, so all I did was I stuck some paper towel wads in those holes. Now you can see you got a nice even offset around it, uh, which will be perfect when we get to the second tone. Don't do it, don't be like me. Don't touch the paint immediately after spraying it. All right, so then I take some, uh, I think this was 400 grit sandpaper, and yeah, you guess it, more sanding. Uh, what we're trying to do here is just level sand a little bit. Um, what I did notice is that the paints that I was using, these spray cans, are acry acrylic enamel. And I don't know, uh, like I said in the previous video, this is a story about using the wrong things. I don't know that it was necessarily the best choice. Uh, it was a little difficult to work with. I think something lacquer-based might have been a bit better or easier to work with. Uh, ultimately, uh, I got the finish that I was looking for, so uh, not horrible, but uh, lacquer-based probably would have been a little bit easier to work with. After a few coats, you could see uh, full coverage, but you could still kind of see the grain in there, which uh, tells me that the green filler that I used wasn't really doing its job, or uh, maybe it was something to do with the paint. I don't really know. But here you can see I put that mask on and started with the green coats. 
a little bit of an offset off the body so you can get a little bit of overspray. I really enjoyed this part of the process, taking that mask off and seeing uh, what it finally looked like underneath there. And again, even after several coats, you can still see some of that grain showing up. And uh, now I'm hitting it with the black around the edges. And what I did here uh, was, I think I used painter's tape and a mask close to the body. Uh, and just painted the rest of it black, including the back of it. Now, you'll notice that here I have hung it up as opposed to laying it down. And, oh, look at that. You can kind of see the green oversprayed just a bit too much uh, on the left top moving over to the right. So, uh, you know, when some things don't work out, you, uh, like I said, start over. So I sanded it back, and uh, we'll skip where I did the rest of it because it's basically the same steps. Uh, and so once I got that finished that I was happy with, uh, I moved on to clear coats. Now you'll notice that I have these little uh, paint points uh, underneath the guitar, and now I have cardboard underneath the body uh, taped to it to protect it from those paint points those little stands uh, I have a feeling you'll see some blemishes later on but I have a feeling those paint points actually created some indentations in the body itself and in the finish so wouldn't recommend doing it but the whole reason I did it this way is because I found that when I hung it up uh, this because this was acrylic enamel it was very heavy and dense and you can kind of see that in this spray here and so because it was so dense, it would drip down the guitar. And I found that this worked a lot better, despite having those indentations. So after that, sanded back with uh, 400 grit uh, sandpaper. You can kind of see some of those indentations. You can kind of see where we've got some sparkling uh, and that sparkling we're trying to get flat and right around the pickups there or the pickup cavities you can see it uh, over between the bridge holes and again over here too so that means more sanding needs to be done that those those shiny spots are lower and so we have to sand down till we reach those to get them flat so we have a nice flat finish that we can uh, make a nice glossy finish So at the time I was doing this, I was using this 400 grit sanding disc that I usually use with my small random orbital. Uh, it fills up with gunk pretty quickly, had to clean it out. It wasn't the best tool or the best uh, material. And there's that pick guard that I mentioned earlier. I love the way it looks uh, as an offset color from the darker, you know, green and black that we have going on in this finish. So that sanding disc works great with a small random orbital to remove lots of material quickly. Not so great when working on a finish like this because it gets all gunked up. Which is why I've switched over to just a, a regular old 400 grit sanding paper. And this sanding paper is a 400 grit wet dry uh, silicon carbide, I think. Certain sections are now getting nice and flat, a little matte looking, which is which is great. The thing I wanted to I really wanted to be careful of was sanding through the clear coats that I had painted on. That happened previously, and I, I didn't show in this video. There's just not time for it. But yeah, I started over again because I sanded through that clear coat, right through the two or through the green, and then blue showed up underneath, and it was a disaster. So I had to do it again.
but uh, that's just part of the learning process, I guess. So now what I'm using to sand is a uh, Scotch-Brite pad, uh, and I like it a lot better than steel wool. I think it works great, and you don't get any um, steel embedded into the wood of your guitar. There's a couple of those indentations in the finish you can see there. A few more. There's still some uh, shiny spots as well. But uh, there's no, there's just no sanding those down far enough without taking off all the clear coats. So uh, at some point, you just have to move on. So the process I went through was uh, to spray about five coats of clear coat, then I'd sand back and try and get everything flat. I sprayed another five coats and then sanded back. Uh, and then finally a third group of five. Oh, there's a blemish that uh, I wasn't real happy about. I, I didn't even realize that I did it until uh, after this. And to be honest, I don't know how it happened. But I certainly noticed after I started uh, wet sanding and, and polishing. So what I ended up doing was doing three sets of five coats of clear coat and sanding back to get it flat and level between each set. You can kind of see it looks pretty glossy there. So instead of using the sandy disc or this 400 grit wet dry paper, I finally went and bought some of that free cut paper that doesn't gunk up. You could do a lot more with it. Um, when it does get a little bit of residue in it, you just brush it right off. Anyhow, after 15 or so coats of clear, we get something that looks like this. Now you can see it still looks a little bit wavy, and you could definitely see a lot of these indentations. Um, but we're going to get those that those waves out by uh, wet sanding. And this is probably one of my favorite things to do uh, in finishing a guitar. I don't know what it is about it, but I just find it real satisfying. Wet sanding, going through grits, um, getting some of that. You, like, you'll see it almost looks like soap uh, as, as you lift some of the clear coat off. Um, but uh, again, just want to get it nice and flat, sand those waves out, and progressively go through to higher grits. I think here I, I started with 800, moved to 1,000, moved to 1,500, and I think I went as high as 2,000 grit. Although I, I've heard a lot of... Uh, different advice about wet sanding, whether or not you even need to do it, uh, how high of grit you need to go up to, but like I said, I enjoy it, so I did it. I think this is where I finally noticed that uh, that blemish right by that top volume knob hole. Process of wet sanding, uh, I just put uh, the different papers that I was going to use in a, I actually have a, a pie dish. Uh, I put a little bit of water in there and a drop of liquid soap, uh, like dish soap, and let it sit for a day or two before I started. Uh, so that white stuff that you see coming up that I'm wiping off isn't actually soap, it's, it's the clear finish that's coming off. And you can kind of see some of those sparkles, what they actually call this is orange peel. Uh, and the idea is that you want to sand it flat enough so that all that orange peel is gone because those shiny spots are low spots. So you get everything down to that. And then after you wet sand and go through all those grits, you can polish. Uh, I think that's going to be in the next video, however. Polishing and then moving on to the neck.
sorry for the view here. Uh, <laughs> not much to see. It's more of the same, but uh, like I said, it's pretty satisfying. with the 2000 grit. So once again, thank you for watching this video. Part three will be coming up soon and uh, I've got special plans for the demo as well. Thanks for watching and please feel free to leave any comments you may have uh, below. Thanks.